In April 2024, the World Conference of Social Workers, SWSD, took place in Panama, where key topics were dealt with, including society, human rights, childhood communities, with a powerful intention to respect diversity through joint actions. This conference saw the attendance of uh, professors and students from the five continents who enjoyed cultural shows of uh, First Nations of Panama, who had also the chance to express their needs and concerns. In this new show of the series, Outlooks on Public Participation in the Framework of the Partnership Agreement between the City Council of Madrid and UNED, the participatory group, its co-directors, Marta Lora Tamayo, Professor of Administrative Law, and Antonio López Peláez, Professor of Social Work and Social Services at UNED, will be talking to Kenia Batista, Chair of the Social Workers Federation for Latin America and the Caribbean, about how significant this World Conference was. Welcome to you all to this new radio show. Good morning, Antonio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Well, you know that Marta loves to be present at all the time zones at the same time, but this is UNED. You ne we never know when you'll be listening to us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from my part as well. Today, we're going to talk about a key element of participation. You know that this group, the participatory group, is a group uh, of good practices of public participation and a key element of participation is mobilization and collective participation, how we manage to achieve results by mobilizing communities that can be profession-based through mobilization and visibility. They achieve recognition of the rights, but also urban communities, rural communities, indigenous peoples, or any other kind of group. From this perspective of participation, we always try to count on international guests. So that's why Kenia Batista is here, Chair of Social Workers Federation for Latin America and the Caribbean, who's just held, organized the World Conference of Social Workers in Panama in 2024, April, precisely, talking about different dynamics of public participation. It's very early in the morning in Panama, so thank you very much for being with us. No, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this fantastic program. I love talking about topics like this. In Panama, it's barely 6 a.m. Exactly. You'll be wide awake in the morning. We are already enjoying our afternoon. Love this time difference. How do you perceive collective participation and mobilization in Panama? Participation in Panama was very important because we managed to get professors, academia, students to participate coming from the five continents of the world. We were particularly interested in the participation of those continents that participate less because of the hardships they face to come. I'm talking about Asia and Africa. It's been a turning point for these kinds of congresses because from Panama we were able to, and many said that there would be competition between the cultural program and the academic program to present what our country was doing culturally or the side of the Afro-descendants or First Nations and history. After the pandemic, to be able to see, to theorize about these topics, seeing how the social work sector is moving forward and how social workers have had to adapt their work and get into topics that were not between their competences. For instance, AI, artificial intelligence, climate change, migration, which is like a pandemic because it's a challenge for all continents and many other topics like robotics, basically other perspectives where social workers have had to, in a way, carry out many studies and theorize about these. I think this project is very interesting, this project of collective dynamization, 
your strategy to give visibility to minority cultures. In this regard, you organize the series of cultural activities and shows, but also the participation of indigenous peoples, representatives, expressing themselves in their own language to shed light on their concerns and needs. In Panama, at least, I mean, we haven't seen this elsewhere in other Latin American countries. Our First Nations, in total, seven First Nations, too, are just now recovering their history and traditions. They have their own lands and territories legally recognized by the government, and also they have a social cabinet where they can present the exercise of the rights from public and social policies that they demand and at least here in Panama they are also well organized if you think about other First Nations in the continent we counted on the princess of one of the First Nations princess is how I called her she was able to present her folklore her cultural expressions this helped a lot because often when we attend these kinds of conferences, congresses, seminars, we, it's likely that we won't be able to visit these groups. And they were able to bring their culture to us to present it in this conference. And I'd say that was a key part of the conference because many were able to enjoy that side of our the culture of our First Nations and our Afro-descendant culture, since Afro-descendants were also present, also engaged. You've highlighted a topic that we work on a lot in the participatory group. On the one side, you were talking about the judicial or the legal governance of indigenous peoples, their cultural representation, and we see that in the whole of, of the participation dynamic. There are two ways of living with society. We've got on the one side an organic, organizational, judicial definition, the one on paper with the introduction of participation instruments that we try to channel. But as a complement or even a contradiction, there's other means and circuits and ways of living, like uh, folklore, dances, associations, that's another kind of participation, and that's where we see that our society is alive. Now, is there really a significant distance, detachment between the day-to-day -day lives of these kinds of communities, their ways of participation, and what legislation says and establishes, what the organic structure sets as participation is there a unison and agreement? Do they work in parallel? We are very concerned about this. We see this, especially in the region. There's a significant detachment or distance between the legislation and its regulations and the reality. Well, it depends on the country in Latin America. Regionally, many First Nations are suffering. They are being kicked out of their territories. They are left outside of decision-making processes. This is due to the influence of what they called Latinos or non-indigenous peoples. The new generations are influenced in a way that they organically stop using their languages, their culture is undermined. It has happened in Panama, like in the rest of the region. The Ministry of Culture, Commerce and Industry is trying to get First Nations to maintain their languages. And I'd say this is a situation that is repeated elsewhere. There's an indigenous conference for Latin America and the Caribbean and we see that each country is moving forward but sometimes the steps are too slow, too little. Other countries are a bit more advanced in this regard but I'd say that the work that's being done from the Federation is aimed at recovering the institutions that we're, yeah, we're trying to, to save from this lens 
in Panama and in other countries, we've got social workers that belong to First Nations and Indigenous peoples. Yes, I think this is key. If you want to participate with uh, Indigenous peoples, you need to have them co-create, co-design, co-host. We've never dealt with this topic in one of our radio shows, the topic of strategies for participation of Indigenous peoples or First Nations in Latin America and how it is opposed to sometimes the conventional participation dynamics that you might likely see in Panama and its city councils and its town halls and in many other Latin American countries uh, that are part of the participatory group. What would you mention as the, the most relevant participation activities, the ones that you've liked the most triggering or fostering the participation of uh, indigenous peoples. What participatory dynamics would you like to share with us? I'd say that all of these activities have had a tangible impact, but migration is a topic that is very close to our heart. For instance, in Panama, at the end of last year, over 200,000 migrants crossing our country. We're not only talking about Latin American migrants, but migrants from Asia and migrants from Africa and other areas. Another impactful topic that we saw was a call from a round table of the Israel-Palestine conflict. At the moment, there's a lot of criticism of Israel's actions towards Palestine. Another very relevant topic is climate change. Again, with regards to our First Nations, one of our First Nations lives in islands and they've had to leave 12 islands and migrate to the coast of continental Panama, which leads to changes of their cultural dynamic, their food systems. They've moved from island-based First Nations to coast-based First Nations. Also, the position of social workers in the face of a globalized world, a world that sees a lot of conflicts, of wars. It's important to see how social workers analyze and prioritize these topics. I'd say these themes will be present in the future. They have been this way since the pandemic. Just to conclude this interview. What is your perception? Because this conference has represented a leap in public participation for our collective, the presentation and discussions on participatory experiences, cultural events. Uh, how do you perceive this dynamic or in the international realm? Tell us about your projects in Panama. For us in Panama, we've always thought from the lens of our participation, that nobody's living the life they live out of nowhere. The fact that we are part of the World Federation of Social Workers tries to make our professors, our social workers, engaged in social work, international movements. Now we are also thinking about uh, becoming members of the Commission for Social Wellbeing. We believe that nobody's always receive their whole training. You can always acquire more knowledge. We need to look at the same problems from the lens of different continents, different peoples. This opens up a new world to us. Where do we stand? Where do we want to go? We want to think about solving problems that impact uh, our professors, our students, our sectors. It's been a wonderful experience. The conference was a month ago, and yet we are still moved, touched. We are very emotional, and many different actions are underway after the conference that we will be presenting to our country's assembly. We are still full of pride and excitement. How wonderful. That's what happens with participation. Participation revitalizes, excites, strengthens, empowers societies. Thank you so much for sharing this process with us, Kenya. The process 
of giving visibility, giving participation spaces to infra-represented representatives, First Nations, Indigenous peoples, excluded groups of society, whatever you want to call them, depending on the, the context, but even in spaces like Panama with clear localized legislation they still have they still struggle to grow to 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 succeed to thrive to be recognized as such the last thing i want to do before we conclude is thank you thank you for the opportunity you've provided to so many collectives who've had the chance to present themselves to act to mobilize with a clear goal as though this were a focalized dynamic a focalized task, in this case, a world conference where they could establish participation dynamics, mobilize. You've managed to do this wonderfully. It's part of what we try to do in the participatory group as well. I'd also like to mention one of your remarks, how participation increases legitimacy and social well-being. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Marta, for your participation. And thank you, Thank you to our technical team too. If you're not present at UNED, you can't see them, but they see us and control us through a glass wall. The, our team is very interesting, diverse and kind. Thank you to our technicians. Thank you.